we haven't heard from the our online audience for a while, let's let's get some questions inshaAllah. I saw somebody had emailed that, oh uh, I saw somebody grabbing a taweez off of somebody on hajj and what's all the fuss about the hajj? I said, I don't know you've turned in new to the channel that you don't understand what those people are, those are called Wahhabis. And they have certain logos on <laughs> their clothes <laughs> that sort of describe who they represent. So that's exactly what the ta'weez is, it's supposed to guard us from the shaitans. But what can you do when a physical shaitan comes after you? Then you know you should have hidden the ta'weez better so that not to distract and bother their eyes. It bothers their energy, bothers their eyes and they're dispatched to take it off of people because it bothers them. So this is their understanding. If they had any type of understanding they would look at the Kaaba and say, look like you put a taweez on top of the Kaaba, what's this khiswa? Has all those names and tabarak and blessing and we're all circumambulating around all of these words and these letters. This is called hijab. The khiswa is a hijab, it's a fabric going over the holy Kaaba. But because they can't understand that shaitan has overtaken them, they don't see anything. They don't see, they just, they just become an agent for shaitan and say, take that light off of that person. But even in the process of making umrah they're going to come to bother. So we know that ahead of time, those why those types of religious things you hide them, put them aside so that the eyes of these shaitans don't come after a person. But if they had eyes to see they would see all these tabarakas everywhere, you're circumambulating stones. If you had a problem with uh, thinking the taweez is shirk, what about the stones that you're circumambulating and that you're eagerly trying to touch? If Allah was worried about that type of shirk, he wouldn't have made us do any of the tawaf, any of the bowing down and none of hajj. But Allah wasn't worried about shirk, He was worried about the shirk khafi which was the hidden shirk and, and making judgment over Allah's creation when Allah should judge His creation alone. So yeah this is welcome to the channel when you see all these things, these are all the teachings of what these Wahhabis… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is do and is the exact power of that taweez that it uh, protect us from the bad energy of shayateen. Even when human whom are blessed by Allah can be overtaken by a demonic energy that goes after people. And it is that very power that Allah is granting through the ta'weez, wear your ta'weez, wear it as a protection. It had so much power that uh, it even attracted them, so alhamdulillah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, thank you for everything. You're welcome. Could you, <laughs> uh, could you please expand more on the teaching about Ashab al Kahf taking directly from the sun? Is this connected to the understanding of their secret to the seven essences? Please forgive my bad adab. No idea. The, the servants of Allah symbolic, 
that we keep telling everybody that uh, this everything is a symbolism. But we want to understand the importance of the sun, they call heliocentric belief, I don't know where these people come up with this garbage. But its understanding is you have to understand the importance of the sun and it is the central power for this earth. You breathe by photosynthesis, you see by the light of that sun and its rays that come into our atmosphere, the firmament which Allah describes as layers on a spherical earth and as a result then we have vision. So all of this Allah has given to us to understand how important sunlight and the energy of the shams is and that's why then we teach all of the realities that it represents the Nur Muhammad and Surat Al-Qadr describes that power that by the permission bi-ithnillah every amr is flowing. Every command is coming through the symbol of that sun. So the owner is Sayyidina Muhammad because everything is made from Nur Muhammadi And Allah gives in Surat Al-Yusuf that even the Prophet Sayyidina Yusuf was in command of that station. So it's a station that can be inherited. He described that the sun and the moon and eleven planets are under my command, under my feet. So alhamdulillah this is a, a station of realities and lights and energies and these are all the studies of these eternal symbols that Allah gives us because I'll teach you something about yourself and I teach you upon the horizon. For some people who don't want to meditate they study the horizon because it's outside. And as a result of studying outside it may lead them to ponder and reflect. So they do it backwards. The people who don't want to meditate, they keep looking out and they're so astonished by what they see, then it triggers an end, a question within their heart, how is it happening? Then they'll ponder, our way is the reverse. Ponder, make your connection first, make your meditation first, connect with a specific energy source because if you just sit by yourself the jinn are going to sit next to you because you don't see them and they start to whisper to you and then they start to write books on satanic energies. Why? Because they said, oh we sat, we sat, we sat until a demon showed up. That's why then Sufi meditation, you know you have to sit. You have to be very specific of the energy that I'm asking for the madad of my shaykhs. I'm asking Allah's rida, the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and then I recite my madad and the madad of the shaykh and asking specifically my shaykh to be present with me. And as an energy source connecting with that energy source, negating myself my bad characteristic, when the flow of energy has been established and, and made. At that time anything the servant looks at begins to illuminate his heart and teach him. Because now you're a servant of Allah and these are all servants of Allah and they will teach you for the sake of Allah Ittaqullah wa alimukumullah, have a taqwa, make your connection, Allah will teach you. Means what? that everything has an angel attached to it. Soon as the believer ponders, the angel of that reality begin to illuminate the heart that this is why this was created, this was how this was created. To the extent of the person's capacity because if they're a doctor they're going to understand greatly the inner realities of human physiology. If they're astronomer they're going to know an immense amount because that's the knowledge and basis of what they know. Otherwise somebody just meditating is not going to be given computer knowledge. It's not wahi, it's ilham. 
an inspiration. So this is the, the basis of tafakkur and contemplation. That's why it's so immensely important. So Ashab al-Kaf is their symbol, <coughs> was the whole symbol that we've been teaching. That in their state of fana and they lose their physical state, they enter into their reality, they're busy in that presence. But then what Allah promised that enter into our reality your state of affairs will be taken care of by us. Why? Because you think, okay if I'm going to go into this deep meditation maybe my body is going to burn in the sun because that would be your dunya right now. You would say, oh well, I can't meditate now, it's, I'm going to get burned from this sun, it's something going to happen, I'm going to be hungry, what am I going to do? And Allah asked in the earlier verses that we discussed, come to the cave and we will settle your affairs. They leave your dunya to us but you, you come to the cave. So they're in their fana and Allah says, don't worry about your body. It will move by the command and the movement of Allah's creation. As the sun moves the body was moving the reverse direction not to be burned and stuck in the sunlight for the whole day and then 309 years of sunlight would have been burning it. So it means Allah give to us just to sleep, come because this is the biggest difficulty for people. Shaykh, I don't have time to do my awrat. All you have is time for your awrat because everything else you're spending time on is a waste of time. That time that you were given by Allah was to do your awrat because if He takes your time away you'll be dead. Now what you're going to do? You're not going to have any money coming in, that's a definite. And two, you achieve nothing of your paradise. So your life on this earth was a waste of time, <laughs> that was the waste of time, right? Not uh, doing my awrad was a waste of time because imagine tomorrow you're dead. Now you didn't achieve anything in paradise and the person is dead, that was a waste of time. The time Allah gives is a trust and what do you do with that time? I do my worshipness, I do my khidmat, I do my awrad, my zikrs and everything that Allah has asked of me. And if I do them and with this understanding that they're teaching that I'm asking Ya Rabbi to enter into the heart of Prophet to be a Rosa Sharif is my cave in the company of my shaykh and I want to be at that cave in every salah, in every dhikr, in every majlis and set my affairs to be straight. So then they become stronger and stronger and stronger in their tafakkur, in their energy, in their whole purpose in life. And as a result Allah begins to set everything in order. But don't just say, okay Shaykh said it tomorrow that's gonna happen and I didn't do anything. No, 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 it's not like that, this is a lifelong process because everybody's affairs are upside down. And that's when you know that when you manage your life it's chaotic. And when you come into this cave and to be from the people training and living within the cave, Allah sets everything the way He wants it. But to reach that state is the great struggle. How to come into the cave, to live like the people of the cave, to have this immense love and service to Sayyidina Muhammad and that set my affairs straight with lots of difficulties, lots of baggage people come with. And alhamdulillah Allah relieves them and fixes them in Allah's time, not our time. So every test going to come to see how much you believe and the priority of your belief system. The love for Sayyidina Muhammad is the, is the greatest relief of difficulty. So everything is going to be a test, inshaAllah Allah grant us the hikmah and wisdom on how to pass these tests inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi
Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. From, the, from your teachings of the seven sleepers being likeliness of seven openings of the head is khidmir, the qalb, representing the qalb heart, vigilant upon the senses in marifa. Hmm? The seven sleepers representing what? Uh, of seven openings of the head and is khidmir, the qalb. Representing the Kalb heart, vigilant upon senses in Marifa. I don't know, that's a complicated question. Is that from Zishan? <laughs> so, there are other people like you out there asking complicated questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah make uh, your heart connected and can keep your heart connected and keep contemplating, and alhamdulillah, some things. Uh, if we talk about something that has not yet hatched then it can confuse people. So we have to talk about subjects that we have already covered so that it becomes a part of that curriculum and to go out. But what people feel inspired write it down, keep meditating and keep going, keep writing it, meditate, contemplate that the seven sleepers, alhamdulillah. But What's the need to connect to what point? Because go back then make sure that your connection with the shaykh is going… they're not going to open anything for you, they're on guard like I told you before. Imagine that you, you're, you're a part of a sort of hierarchy and you enter into the room because of them and now you want to talk to the different guards, say, can you come to my house and, and guard my house, can you do like this, can you do… they don't even look at you and have nothing to do with you, won't even talk to you. But if you ask them for fires and blessings, they send you a blessings. But to break the chain of command to start dealing with you, it would never happen because then they would be responsible that why did they break the discipline. So I mean the teachings of these realities, these are power info from the shaykh to the shaykh, not, not for students, they're not going to call on Qitmir and uh, <laughs> the, the different Ashab al-Kaf and uh, Kafartush, Tabarnush, Manush, Rashu, these, these, these names are given for tabarak and blessings that when you meditate call out the names for the barakah. Your only concern is the connection with your shaykh because then you become tariq al-adab. Then you go outside of the adab and it starts to now count against you. So that's important. These are the tools the shaykh has so that when he needs support for issues that, that are required from his training. But then when he gives the information to the students they, they're supposed to put in their book of names and they put all these names and all these realities and they read them for tabarak. But the phone number they have and the only phone number they have is the phone number of their shaykh for example, they call that's their madad to the shaykh. At that time with the madad to the shaykh that say they did the justice from the barakah of these names and they recite the names of these jinn or these awliya and these uh, holy souls and that's for blessings. If the shaykh and their tafakkur is so strong and they have a strong connection, the shaykh can begin to introduce different souls. But that's through the, the door and the gate of the shaykh. Because if you don't understand that they keep thinking, oh can we connect with Sayyidina Jibra'il salam and just now sit down and keep calling on Sayyidina Jibra'il but they're not in their tafakkur and they're not calling upon the shaykh that no becomes against the whole adab of the tariqah. So why give all these different names and realities is to write in your book of names. A day will come and things will open then you'll understand that, oh I have call on these names, these blessings, these dressings to be received upon them. But my connection is the connection with the shaykh, he's my door towards these realities so that I don't enter into something else or I just keep knocking and nothing's happening. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Do we choose our Rub or does our Rub choose us? Is it predetermined? 
everything must be determined, how could you choose your authority? When you move into a town do you choose who the police will be in your neighborhood? No, how would you do for dunya? The dunya is much easier, right? You move into an area that authority is already established, now you're under their dominion. So that's why if you move into a bad area you can be in trouble, right? Because all of a sudden bad sheriff, bad police, bad whatever authority. I see those in India with this guy has a stick and hitting everybody, hitting everybody. That's bad news, right? Because that authority <laughs> is causing big problem. So it means no, authority is already established that's why it means authority and one is in command and the other one being commanded. Now how do you raise your status? Then that becomes the one who knows himself, arifa nafsahu, arifa rabbahu. Once he begins to take a path in which to know himself, fight all his demons, fight all the inner shaitans and, and uh, bad inner police that are bothering and, and tampering with him. When he fights all of those and then Allah elevate the servant means now the rank of that servant internally becomes very high. And what we said from the world of light that the inner rank has dominion over the earth, right? Their inner rank can pull rank on the physical earth. If they enter into an area where the physical authority are not acting properly, their spiritual authority can begin to alter the physical because they have dominion over the physical world. So you saw in the Jedi movie when he was with his master, the Jedi, and they went to a gate and they were going to have a problem with the guard. And then the master, let us through <laughs> and the guard repeated, please go through. Why? That was a symbol for people just to understand in this physical world. The people whom control the world of light and have dominion in the world of light, they have immense dominion over the physical world. But the one whom has no dominion in the, phys in the spiritual world has absolutely nothing in the physical world. Zahukan Allah describes, if you think you have power in the material world, you're holding uh, on dust thinking it's a rope, <coughs> that's not power. But the one whom has power in the heavens, my goodness imagine them what type of power they have on earth, everything is under their command. And that's what you see in those sci-fi movies and fantasy movies. Why fantasy movies? Because fantasy movies attract very heavenly souls because they remember their reality. They entered here onto this physical world and say, what is all this? When they see fantasy movies they remember, look at the power that we have, look at the realities and the light that we have. And you watch these spiritual and, and fantasy movies how they move things around with light and with energy. So imagine that power is real if Allah opens for the servant and the person whom has physical, what they're going to do with physical in the face of something like that? Nothing. So it means the one whom seeks spiritual openings and dominion in the world of light, Allah describes in Surah Al Yaseen what that he is yad. Glory be to his hand for he has dominion over everything. Right? Does Surah Yasin then? Kulli shay. His hand is dominion over everything. So it means that when Allah give you from the world of light and authority, we said before the room is all atomic molecules, all of them Muhammadur Rasulullah. So means what? They can immediately morph the room, they can change every object and everything. It's all Muhammadun Rasulullah Every person is an empty shell with no defense. They can enter into anything and into any energy 
and they can overtake any energy, any object that can be everywhere and nowhere at the same time. And the shaykhs have that understanding and been taught that when they're in their seclusions. They could look at a forest and the entire forest was their shaykh's face talking to them with the leaves moving to show that they have dominion over everything. And that the whole of the reality of all the walls could hear them, could speak to them, everything. So imagine that everything has an atom and a molecule, all of those are Muhammadun Rasulullah So means what? Kulli shay. If we reach into those oceans of reality they have dominion over everything. And whatever shaitan plans, Allah's plan is already over encompassing everything because Allah wrote the program for everything. That's why better to take from the hand that dispensing versus the hand that giving out on dunya. So people running after the dunya people, oh I want to get something from them. Why you don't take it from the one whom is printing it from above? So means everything is coming from Allah so run after the world of light, not the world of form, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, I feel this month that all my bad character is coming out this month. How do I come back to safety? My mind tells me my condition will never change. It's a good thing that Mawlana Shaykh said you have to become no mind person. I mean, this way is based on the heart not the mind because shaitan is in the mind not in the heart. So make your salawats, make your dhikr, give your charity. Every time you do something give charity, every time you do something wrong give charity, go out and be of service, make your connection, your muraqabah, all of that. It's a fight, it didn't say you're going to win. So again like if you watched in the movie The Lord of the Rings, they go out they fight there's 400,000 demons, orcs. Did you think that like with one swing your fight was over? No, you just merely decided to enter now into this fight. For 30 years you got to fight like that. The desire never goes, the badness never goes, every type of energy is coming from every direction, it's never ending. So you just got to keep swinging and swinging and swinging means that you do your zikr, your awrad, your meditation, your practices, your charity. Don't think, oh I've been so charitable now I don't be charity anymore, oh I did so much awrad I don't do it <laughs> anymore means already lost. They're, they're in hundreds of thousands fighting you at every moment, at every moment. Until the Jah Nasrullahi wal Fat, until Allah's Nasrullah comes and begin to fight on your behalf to suppress. And even then, Prophet described, Ya Rabbi, don't leave me to my nafs for blink of an eye. Why? Because they're coming from every direction. And that was the ishadat for us to understand that Prophet is, don't take your eye off the ball. This game is not over until you took your breath and then even then in the grave we see what Allah has in store. So it's never over where we think, oh I just conquered and everything's great. No, everything continuously struggles, struggle, struggle until Allah grants us our last breath and alhamdulillah then we see what the journey then has inside the grave inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Nurjan. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Forgive me for my ignorance. Uh, what is the secret of MashaAllah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah? This was in the month of uh, Surah Dhu Kaf. That was in this, right after the story of Ashab al Kaf, Allah gives to us then the story of. Someone whom had a lot and a servant of Allah So they had an interaction where one who thought he had a lot from dunya and looked from Allah's servants and looked down on him 
It's all like you sort of think you're connected but you have nothing. Look at me, I have wealth and children and, and fields. And uh, the man wasn't happy with that reply that he made and said, you should thank Allah for everything you have for it, Allah can take it all away. He says, this I have so much Allah can never take anything away from this. The next day a storm came, Allah took it all away. So it was the, the field was like burnt, the crops were completely destroyed and he came out clapping and taking his hands like, how this happened, how this happened, how this happened. He said, I, didn't I tell you? that Allah can take everything away and that you should have said, MashaAllah, La quwwata illa billahi alayhi wa nadeem. And that is a, alhamdulillah Mawlana Shaykh asked that we use that as a protection from difficulty. We don't know at what point in the day Allah may be angered with us, that Allah wants to send some sort of punishment from some sort of arrogance or badness from ourselves or bad action. So alhamdulillah continuously asking, MashaAllah quwwata illa billah ya Rabbi, under the understanding if I've done anything that you're going to bring some sort of punishment, this would diminish and lower that. That by the will of Allah and there is no might and no power except in Allah and That man said, had you recited that, that what Allah gave to you, He wouldn't have cursed you and destroyed it the next day. So anyone getting into their car, mashaAllah quwwata illa billahi alayhi wa because this is the most dangerous vehicle or weapon that we have. You enter into a car and you can get hit, you can hit, so it becomes a very dangerous exposure or you get into a bus, a train, a plane. So it's a good practice to continuously recite and if you feel something is not good say, mashaAllah quwwata illa billahi. So these are again all these uh, the zikrs and, and awrads that Mawlana Shaykh gave as uh, secrets of Qur'an and protection from Holy Qur'an that is given to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. Surat Al-Fatiha. As Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.